Hello Power and Designing Collection fans and welcome back to Toku Topics. So I finally got it. So I finally got the Zord Ascension Project Power and Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin Dino Megazord regular color version. So you might have seen on the channel a couple of weeks ago, I uploaded my, I guess, sort of review, also apology video for buying the NFT black and gold version of this thing. Uh, but this is finally me getting the regular color version uh, after it being out for so long. And uh, there is kind of the best attempt I can get at this dorm display here, or this dorm location of filming, uh, to fit the whole box into the frame. So uh, we'll just have to see how this is going to work framing-wise for this, because uh, there's just not a ton of space that I can do a video like this for, at either my home or the dorm. Uh, but yeah, so I got it. Um, so I was definitely waiting on a sale for this thing. I did not want to spend $165.99, and I did not. Um, so I ended up getting it from GameStop when they had it on sale for $124.49, which is not even the lowest I've seen it be, but with Dragonzord out and me already having the black and gold one, I said screw it, let's just get it over with, which is kind of my entire thoughts behind this thing. So I kind of dived into my thoughts on this thing in the black and gold NFT version. So it's going to be sort of similar because obviously this is the same idea or the same product, it's just the proper color scheme, uh, but this is the retail version, this is the one that's more likely out there or what definitely is uh, the one that you're probably more likely to have or even want. Um, but yeah, as you probably have seen on the, on the internet for the last couple of months, this thing is uh, certainly a mess of a product and is not that great of a product. Um, but in other regards, I like what Hasbro's doing here. I like the Zord Ascension project in concept. I think Megazord is not that great, but I think Dragonzord looks pretty solid and I actually ordered him off of Hasbro Pulse this morning at the time we're recording this video, which is uh, Wednesday, uh, November 17th or 16th, uh, 2022 here. So I should be getting Dragonzord somewhat soon. And then of course, Astro Megazord looks amazing. So let's get into it here. So we have the Zord Ascension Project Dino Megazord. The box, as everybody has kind of said in their own video reviews, and I'm not really going to be bringing anything super new to the table here, it's just kind of my thoughts and my video on this thing, uh, but I love the packaging. I genuinely do. I think it's a very, very gorgeous packaging uh, with kind of the sketch of the, Z of the Zord like helmet there and this kind of really cool design there. You have Zord Ascension Project MZ0101 Mighty Morphin Dino Megazord uh, because of the fact that it is the Megazord that appeared first in the first season in the first episode, um, so that's why it's 0101. Plastic free packaging, has logo, lightning collection logo, and then on the side, which I hope will fit into the frame, not really, but you have this really nice artwork of the Dino Megazord, and then you have a yellow uh, lightning collection logo down there, and then on the other side, you have the five dinosaurs, which, which you can barely see T-Rex up there, but it says uh, Z0101, point A, B, C, D, and E, um, so it's instead of Megazord, it's just Zord, and I like that kind of distinction there, I think that's pretty cool, and then on the back, you have a nice picture of all of the open cockpits that this thing has, the five little minifigures, tank mode, Megazord mode, and all this kind of stuff down there, and then the GameStop sticker that they put on these products, which uh, probably just gonna keep that there. Kind of, I don't like the sticker on there, and it's probably somewhat easy to remove, although I am kind of worried about the integrity of the slipcover. But that's the thing, I love this packaging. I don't really like that it has a slipcover, because it's definitely prone to fraying all over the place, and it definitely is doing that, uh, but, that's kind of just what's going to happen with this. And at the top, you have that MZ0101 with the Z logo for the Zord Ascension Project. And on the bottom, you have plastic free packaging, 1144 scaled model, and you get the barcode and all that kind of stuff there. So uh, that is what we have going on. And it's kind of got some dust on it and stuff in the box. Uh, but yeah, it's a very, very pretty thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the seals on this thing. And uh, I'll try to maybe get a different angle and we'll kind of look at the interiors of this box. Uh, if you haven't already seen them from like dozens of YouTube videos already, but you know, I finally have one for myself. And here it is with the slip cover off. So I, like I said earlier, just love the nice presentation of this thing. Uh, it is a very, very impressive box. Uh, you do have that QR code up there, uh, which currently takes you to the Zords website, the Zord Ascension Project website that Hasbro has made. Although, what's really strange about that website is that there's an entry for this Megazord, there's an entry for the black and gold NFT version, but there's no entry for Dragonzord or Astro Megazord, and I think, if I remember correctly, we'll know soon when I get my Dragonzord in the mail, uh, that they've removed the QR code from the Dragonzord, so they might have already given up on that website. Uh, which, if they have, that's very unfortunate, because that was a kind of cool idea. Uh, and then, on the back here, you just have, you can kind of see it in this lighting here, if I kind of try to angle it a little bit better, you do get that Z engraved on this really nice red. So I do like this quite a bit, the whole presentation here. Uh, but the thing is, I'm just kind of terrified of actually opening this thing, uh, because 
I've seen online so many different examples of this thing breaking, or a lot of examples of the tiny little ranger figures being the wrong colors, or pieces missing. Uh, somebody got the black and gold one, right? Which is super, super expensive and super, super rare. And they didn't have a pterodactyl. Like theirs didn't had a duplicate of like the bag that has the hands and little figures and stuff, but no pterodactyl. So yeah, so hopefully, I mean, this one would be technically more easier, quote unquote, to replace if something was wrong with it. And my black and gold one actually was perfectly fine, thankfully. But yeah, I, I, I am definitely terrified. So, and then in here, we have this gorgeous artwork, which I'm going to try to show off the best that I can, uh, that has the Megazord fighting gold art, which is really, really neat. And the fact that they actually made a unique artwork for the black and gold one was also really interesting. And if anybody's curious, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to this one uh, that is going to be a full-on comparison between the regular color version and the black and gold NFT one in both Zord mode, tank mode, uh, boxes especially, because there are some slight differences. Uh, but I do quite love that artwork there. And then, of course, inside we have... The whole kind of cockpit sort of console look to this thing which is really really cool uh, which shows off where each of the zords are so of course the tyrannosaurus is in there and then vice versa pterodactyl mastodon triceratops saber tooth and uh, all that's left to do is to see if everything is in here so i'm going to record the entire unboxing like process uh, but i'm definitely going to be cutting to different parts of it uh, because it's not going to be the most entertaining thing in the world but first up we do have the Triceratops. What? <laughs> the Tyrannosaurus? I don't know why I said that. I was thinking I was looking at blue when I said it, but looking at him, paint looks to be pretty okay. You know, I'm pretty pretty much know what to expect after having the black and gold one for a couple of weeks. So Alright, not too too bad. I know these are prone to popping off. Let's see, does this one does his arms actually want to bend? Because they don't on my black and gold. Oh, they don't really want to here either. I do. I hate how tight these arm joints are at the elbows. They definitely are supposed to move, but mine just never want to. And then the Megazord head was also very difficult to get, or the mask was very difficult to get off. I'll just show the Megazord cockpit in there. But yeah, doesn't look too bad. Pretty happy with that right now. So here we have the whole warning thing, and then you do have the instructions, which I'm just going to kind of briefly show off here, uh, are pretty comprehensive, for sure. I'm showing you how to do tank mode and Megazord mode and everything like that, so there is the full extent of these. And then that continues onto the back uh, for just kind of showing you how some of the Zords work and how the little cockpits open up and everything. Uh, but if you've owned any version of this Megazord... For a brief second, I thought there was no power sword in that bag. <laughs> I was about to lose my mind, but no, there is. So there is the power sword. If you own any version of this Megazord, as I was saying, you probably know how to combine this uh, to the, you know, to a pretty good degree, I would say. But the, the sword is very, very pretty. Uh, I'm fully zoomed out on my phone camera right now, so it doesn't like to focus when I'm fully zoomed out. So we'll go ahead and zoom back in. But the detailing is really pretty. I love that chrome. The only thing that makes me worried is the fact that this handle is all painted in black uh, paint there, uh, which, as you can see, is already chipped right there, I think. Pretty good. So... You know, I'm very scared about the Megazord actually holding this because you have to like slide it through his hand. So I'm worried about the chrome chipping and the black chipping. But I don't really know how else you could have done it unless you made the hand actually like articulated to where it could just grip it like that and you don't have to slide it through. That's the thing that really makes me uh, kind of weary of that. I don't really like that uh, for just kind of longevity purposes of this toy uh, because, you know, or collector item. I mean, it is a toy, but it's 15 plus. So I'm definitely going to be rating this more on a collector scale than anything else and so that when you have these kind of semi i guess anti-collector sort of aspects to it uh you know i don't like that so we have like no space to work with this here uh, but this bag is the one that i'm very terrified about checking out because this is the one that should have all the tiny rangers in it and that's one thing that's been very uh messed up with this megazord is that people have been getting the wrong colors so let's see how what we have in here so i am very happy to report from what i can tell I have five, well I'd obviously have five distinct colors, but I also think everybody's in their correct poses. It's just really hard to tell with the very tiny molding on here, uh, but I do believe, oh wow, <laughs> but I do believe that we're all good in this department, having all five of the rangers in their proper colors, in their proper poses. We also have a left and right hand, so that's a good start. That's another thing that people have been getting, uh, they've been getting like not two different hands, you know, kind of a 
kind of an injetti type problem there uh, with this thing. So, so far, so good. I swear that the last bag I'm going to open is just going to be completely wrong or something. But here's the pterodactyl. So we're looking good there. I still do not like this chest detailing, but it's not as egregious in person as it kind of looks on some of the promo shots. I still don't like that though. I don't like this this liberty uh, that Hasbro's taken to the design. And I'll get into that a little bit later in the video, uh, but some people are for it, but I am not. <laughs> I'm not really for it. But uh, everything looks pretty solid on the pterodactyl. My personal favorite Zord is next up here with the Mastodon. Which all things considered looks pretty good. I didn't realize he had a somewhat movable trunk. Do these ones turn? This one does kind of though. Or this one definitely does, but I don't want to move those two. But yeah, not too bad. I do kind of like the, it's not really a difference in plastic like paint there. Maybe it kind of is in some degree, but I like that. Uh, you do get this kind of cardboard protector for the interior of the Mastodon, which is nice. Uh, just to kind of protect it from all this paint rubbing up against each other in there, which is a nice thing that they've included. Uh, but, you know, since I think a lot of people are probably going to display this in Megazord mode, you don't necessarily uh, need it out of the box, but it is a nice detail uh, that they've included in there for just when it's in the box. Uh, these pieces seem to be good. Um, these ones are prone to snap on people, the heel pieces uh, that become, or that become the heel pieces for when you have it in Megazord mode, which, there we go, it's going to focus. So just be careful with those ones. Mine seem to be okay here, but, but you know, they're kind of a brittle plastic. So let's see how this one is. Okay, looks good, looks good. So we'll put that back in there. See, I can definitely see how they snap because they probably snap when people are trying to put pressure on putting them back onto the back of the Mastodon like that. It's a little tricky, uh, but there is that one. Triceratops is next here. And we'll see how difficult it is to get this plastic piece to extend because it definitely can for Zord mode. You can kind of see it there, but it's just, I feel like it's pretty tricky to get that out there. Um, but I do like the thickness of it. Uh, that mouth seems a lot more easier to open on this one than the regular color version, so, or the, the black and gold color version. I knew these guns could turn. They don't really want to turn on my black and gold one, but they definitely turn here. So that's pretty cool. I will say, uh, just kind of first impressions of this one, It's feels a little nicer than the black and gold one if that makes any kind of sense it doesn't really make any kind of sense but uh, i feel like maybe it's just because i've gotten used to holding uh, the black and gold one a little bit but i feel like i could be a little bit more rough with this i don't want to be because of how prone it is to breaking but in some degrees i feel like this is somewhat more manageable uh, or i'm less scared of messing with it i suppose and then of course last but not least we have the saber tooth tiger whose mouth is just wide open <laughs> right out of the box there. But once again, looks pretty good. Uh, Paint-wise, looks pretty good. Kind of get those, those legs out of there. I mean, it definitely feels quite hollow. But that's just because of the kind of the nature of this. This one feels a little loose there. Um, kind of move the tail out. Not bad. So that's pretty much the whole unboxing experience for this guy. So I'm going to clean everything up here. We're going to take a look at all the Zords individually, and then we'll combine the tank mode and Megazord mode uh, to continue on with the video. And here are the Zords. So we have everything all kind of cleaned up here. And, you know, just looking at it, like, display-wise this entire time, this whole Megazord is really, really nice. I mean, what's cool about this thing to me is the fact that, well, I've never owned like a collector grade version of the Dino Megazord. Uh, the only versions of the Dino Megazord that I really have in my collection in its proper correct color scheme is the like retro Megazord one from Walmart. I have the Hasbro 2021. I also have the Imagine X one. So for me, I never got the legacy one. I don't have the Solo Chogokin. I don't have an original one. So in my personal collection, this will be my definitive version of this toy or of this design. And so for that, I really do like it in that regard. Uh, and the th But the thing is, is that it just, it doesn't feel like a premium kind of collector item, which is sort of what it's advertised to be. And some of the liberties that has was taken with some of the designs on these things, I'm not a fan of. I will say that they do look somewhat better in person than they do on some of these promo shots that we've been getting over the last like year for this thing. But yeah, and also kind of with I, and I said a lot of this in the black and gold one already, 
but there's just a lot of things here that just I don't want to mess with. They feel like something I shouldn't like be trying to crack in joints or trying to move, even though I know that they can, because uh, I feel like I'm going to break something on some of these things. Uh, but we'll go ahead and kind of start, you know, taking a look at these in detail with the T-Rex. So we'll zoom in a little bit there uh, and kind of bring him in here. So he does look quite nice. Uh, I do like all the detailing and everything with the teeth and the paint. Uh, but I just, all these kind of design elements that they've added, like sort of the extra wiring, or I guess, or I don't even know what it's supposed to be that they've added kind of over this place. I don't really am not a fan of. The thing is that like, I get what they're kind of going for, kind of the more robotic design of these Zords. And they were kind of talking about how some of it's based off of like concept art or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, is that when I want a collector version of a Megazord, I want it to look show accurate. And this does, it also doesn't at the same time. Uh, which is just something that does kind of personally bother me. Uh, now I have finally gotten these joints to crack in, and so they do bend there, and you have this nice movement up there, and all over the place there. So articulation-wise, he is quite good. Uh, I do like this, or pretty much all of them are. But uh, this one is going to be very important. This one, this waist joint, moves a lot easier uh, than it does on my black and gold ones. So I really had to break that one in. Uh, but this is a very nice joint there on this one. That's really going to be nice with Megazord mode, and you kind of have a bit of a torso kind of, uh, kind of crunch there, ab crunch there, uh, which I do think is nice. Uh, these joints are still terrifying, but I will say that this one sounds a lot better. That one sounds bad, but this one doesn't sound as terrible. But I know people were pointing out on Facebook uh, just how scary those internal joints actually really look uh, in terms of their long-term uh, like longevity kind of concerns. So I would not try to move those joints too much, uh, but you know, you do have that I know people are always talking about how easy it is for these things to fly off, which I'm sure is probably going to happen at some time in this video. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but you do have a nice rotation there and a bend there. And, you know, some of these joints actually are kind of cracking in quite easily, quite nicely on mine. So I am happy for that. So that's good. This doesn't really want to stay up there. I do like the nice paint there, the nice little black uh, paint on the tip of the tail and the whole paint down there. The joint there is a little scary, that just kind of one singular peg that kind of keeps the tail in there. Uh, but uh, overall, T-Rex, not too bad. Not too bad. So, and then kind of looking at this theory, he keeps kicking the tripod, and I'm sure that's making noises in the video editing. I'm sure editing Josh is gonna hate me later. Uh, but you do have the nice, it's kind of hard to get it, but you do have the little cannons in his mouth. It's kind of hard to angle that to where you're not going to see part of the Megazord face, in my opinion, but I do like that detail is there uh, whenever they include that in any version of the T-Rex. I always think that's quite fun. So that is the T-Rex, which will kind of just kind of have chill back of the hair. Uh, next up, we'll go ahead and look at the Mastodon, which doesn't really do much in this mode. Uh, I am curious how easy these cannons are going to be moved on this one. Pretty easily, actually. So these, yeah, this one has actually had a pretty good time pretty easy time getting some of these joints to crack in because uh, these can move for the Megazord mode to actually adjust where the cannons are which is something that this has never been a thing on any other version of the Dino Megazord that I know of uh, but I think it's kind of neat so there is that kind of regard to that uh, you don't really have any kind of movement on him like at all in uh, Zord mode except for the little tusk there and see I almost forgot to do it again I always forget about the little cockpit modes that this does have so we'll kind of show it off on the T-Rex so there is the Red Ranger in the cockpit there on the head, which is pretty cool. I do think that that is a really neat detail. And the whole thing with the little sticker on the Megazord cockpit, uh, which we'll get to later, I love that as well. And then here on the Mastodon, it's on this little M. So I love that quite a bit. That is a really fun detail. And they, they've carried that over onto like Dragonzord and the Astro Megazord as well, uh, which I cannot wait to get that Astro Megazord. That thing looks absolutely incredible. Uh, but here is the Triceratops which I think is pretty nicely detailed as well. Uh, there's a little bit of some white paint chip on mine there, which I'm not so happy about, but I can live with it. There's also a kind of a bit of silver paint chip there a little bit on mine, I think, possibly, on this kind of part, but that's not, that's not too bad. Uh, you do have some nice articulation there for when this does become the, you know, the foot of the Megazord, but it kind of is just you know some nice movement there. Uh, and then you have the little Blue Ranger in the cockpit there which is pretty neat. I think the eyes are painted well, the yellow, the mouth opening is pretty nice. I don't think the Mastodon has an open mouth because I think it just kind of has a tusk. 
Uh, and then it kind of, what, kind of what I showed earlier, you can move the tail and you can move these cannons. You can kind of rotate them all around. However you kind of want to position that, I think that's pretty cool uh, how they've kind of, you know, put that in there. And you have these painted treads on the bottom. They are not actual treads. They're not going to actually work how you would, I guess, kind of want some treads to work. But nice detail nonetheless that they've included. Sabertooth Tiger. Also not too bad. I do like the paint on there. Uh, mine turned out pretty clean, I'd say, for the most part. Maybe some slight silver chips right there, but nothing too bad. Uh, this does feel a little loose on mine, so we'll see kind of how that is in Megazord mode, how that's going to... I guess the real test would really be... I mean, we, we will have those ankle brace plates uh, from the Mastodon, but I'm very curious kind of how that's going to hold up uh, weight-wise when we have Dragonzord, but we'll see. Uh, but I do like the paint on there and the articulation that they've included in here is pretty good. I wish it kind of had one more bend there, but for what it is, it definitely serves a purpose or serves its purpose in giving it some level of articulation in the Sabertooth mode. So not, not too bad. And then of course you have the nice tusks there which do rotate just completely on their own. Like, well, not on their own, but like together. And then you do have the Yellow Ranger cockpit there, which is a little hard to get these to focus, but it's still a really cool detail. And the mouth opens pretty wide on the saber tooth, so I do like that quite a bit. And then finally we have the pterodactyl, the simplest of all of them, but still painted quite nice for the interior. I think you're not really going to see much, but I do appreciate that they gave it the effort to paint it. And then you do have these wings, which I do always kind of feel like the clip for these is a little scary when it kind of makes that one movement past that little crevice there. Uh, but uh, you also have the nice articulation there on the head. You don't have any kind of mouth or anything like that, but you do have the Pink Ranger cockpit, which I do like that they've painted her pink to make her stand out from the rest of the whole white head there. It's a very nice detail. You do have articulation kind of right there. You can kind of get it to accordion in. And then of course, you can take the tank pieces that are gonna go in the back of the Megazord and they can become pterodactyl feet, which is something that you've always been able to do since the beginning pretty much, although I don't think this is something that ever happened in the show. Uh, but it's always been a tradition to where you can connect the tank pieces or the little cannon pieces uh, to be pterodactyl feet so that way it's not just kind of sitting there like that. So there it is. So I think kind of the next step here, we'll kind of zoom out. Uh, I skipped through this or kind of just skipped to this in my black and gold video. Uh, but we're going to combine this into tank mode and uh, I say that with a kind of uh, here we go sort of attitude because it's a little bit of a pain uh, to combine this into tank mode from my personal experience with this kind of thing so far with this particular Megazord mold. And we're going to take a look at the hands and like the tiny little figures later on. So starting out with this, uh, what you're going to want to do is take the tri- or I, why do I keep wanting to call you a Triceratops? Take the T-Rex and move the arms up there and then we'll kind of detach the tail there. And then you always, oh yeah, you want to get those ports out, which are a little difficult to get these uh, here we go to get these ports out of there I appreciate that they hid those in the knees there uh, for just the design but it is relatively tricky to get them out of that little door hatch there we go once you get it though it's not too bad but I always forget how much of a Megazord you kind of want it standing up because you don't want it like a full kind of right angle, but you want it sort of, but not like a hundred percent for the T-Rex. It's a little, ah, ah, I do, I just, ah, I do not like that cracking noise, but you kind of want it sort of like that. We'll kind of move the ab crunch there a little bit. Uh, so we're going to take the Triceratops, fold that in, saber tooth, you're going to kind of collapse everything in, which I don't feel like this one wants to. There we go. Kind of have to bend them a little bit and then collapse them in and collapse that. And then I always do get kind of terrified. I'm kind of looking at the back picture just to kind of see how much of an angle he needs to be at. Uh, but I do get a little bit of terrified uh, whenever I combine the leg joints there because they are very tight. Uh, so we'll kind of collapse that there. All right, we got one of them. So you kind of want the foot to kind of be back like 
that, sort of, right? Kind of something like that for tank mode. It's not going to be perfect, but it's tank mode. <laughs> it's something that has never been uh, the most exciting mode of the Megazord. Alright, it's kind of making it kind of at, at the angle it wants to go anyway. So we'll just kind of keep it like that. I know I'm not doing it perfectly. There, something like that is a little bit better. Because they should kind of be flush against the ground. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Alright, next up we're going to take some of the more difficult pieces uh, and make them into their tank mode counterparts. So, I'm a little terrified by the integrity of the clips on the Mastodon here. Uh, I think there's three. Yeah, there's three clips holding in the Mastodon head. Oh, jeez. I do not like the integrity of that clip uh, onto these three clips there. That definitely does scare me for just the future. Uh, but you're going to move those. And then, oh, I almost forgot to take off the back plates. I could have snapped them. I definitely see how these back plates get snapped uh, quite easily. And when you're in tank mode, I don't really think they have a place to go. Uh, they do in Megazord mode, which is very, very nice. But I get their point. It kind of just makes Mastodon look a little more cleaner. But it does scare me. Uh, then we will go ahead and take the feet off of Pterodactyl to go ahead and give them to the Mastodon arms here. take this up a tad and then come around here clip that one in clip that one in and then kind of try to straighten this out the best that we can so we kind of have something like that going on and then we get to the parts that are always really really annoying for me so we'll kind of zoom in on this guy uh, to see how this goes but you want to take this clip that's right here and clip it into this part of the T-Rex, but it never wants to do that. Like, ever. So, because you have to kind of, I got it. <laughs> wow, that actually worked for once. I'm actually kind of amazed by that. So maybe we'll actually get that last piece that's always a pain, which is connecting the pterodactyl with these clips there onto these little slots that are here in the Mastodon feet because that never wants to do it. Oh, oh, look at that. It worked. So I actually made a full tank mode and I don't want to rip my hair out. That's crazy. I've never had that actually like work successfully. So it's funny. It's like this Megazord knew I was going to kind of bad talk it uh, because it's kind of been working very nicely which is really crazy to me so i guess if you just happen to get a lucky pretty okay one like i did it's not that bad <laughs> but uh it's kind of a little wonky i don't have like the best i'm sure i, I mean obviously i didn't combine this like a hundred percent i personally don't care for tank mode I, I think it's a cool thing that they kind of always include on like the legacy version or soc version or this one but it's just always kind of a weird looking formation so let's go ahead and turn it into the full megazord so we'll take Pterodactyl off of there, we'll take the Mastodon shield out of there, we'll take the cannons off of the little feet there, we'll go ahead and peg them in back here just because why not, that's where they're going to have to go anyway. So we'll just peg the owl, that's a little, it's a little sharp there. And then we'll come around here, make the really terrifying joint clicks there, which oh jeez I still just absolutely despise that, I will bend that up. We'll move that up, and that, and that, and then, oh, don't forget to flip those tusks up there or you're not really going to get anywhere. It's also quite squeaky, which is something that just kind of makes me, like, kind of just, uh, like, kind of cringe every time I, I hear it. But there we go, we kind of got it. So now he's standing all good. Uh, before I pan up and finish this, I do want to go and show off those heel pieces. So we'll take them. They're a little tricky in some capacity to get to clip in. Um, that they do, or they're supposed to, sort of, I mean, they kind of just rest in there with friction, kind of. But like, there is, like, ports there, which I think are supposed to, oh, I combined them in, they're upside down, I think, that's why. Yeah, there we go. So they're supposed to kind of line up in there to those little slots, and they'll kind of click in. And then we'll grab the other one there. Which also just kind of match with the kind of the treads on the bottom of these two. 
So in that regard, I do kind of like that. And then I'll take this one and it kind of rests in there. And he kind of wants to go all over the place here, so. Which it does add some more stability, so I do quite enjoy that. Uh, but uh, it's also nice just for storage too, to actually have somewhere for them to go. So there is where we are at so far. Okay, so now for this part, we'll just kind of make sure we have everything sort of straightened up there. I do love this detail that they have added, or this little feature, where you can unpeg the Triceratops. Why did I call it a Triceratops again? The T-Rex tail. And you can bend it there, and then you can actually clip it in uh, separately up here, which is rather tricky. There's a connector right there, which lines up sometimes. It doesn't... It's a very tight connection though, and I don't like how tight that is, but it does allow you to have the full waist articulation and get the tail out of the way, which I do quite like that. Uh, and then we'll kind of come back around here. Of course, we're gonna move this plate down so we can grab the T-Rex head and tuck it away, maybe, if it wants to go in there. Close that up, we'll fold his little arms up. I will fold the proper hands out, which this is the last test to see if he has the correct hands, and he does. So good on them, Hasbro. I got one with actual good quality control. That's insane. So <laughs> I guess I'm lucky. Very happy with that. And then, of course, we're going to take the pterodactyl, fold that in, fold this in, and then that's going to clip in there. And I don't like that pterodactyl connection very much. But once you get it, you do kind of have it. So there's that. We're kind of try to straighten him out kind of the best there. And then it's going to be hard to show this, so I'm just going to kind of grab him. So, of course, you finish it off by taking the horns and scooching them to the center. And that is your completed, fully combined dino megazord who's kind of completely out of the frame there in a way so not bad not bad and we'll go ahead and take the sword i will kind of bend his elbow there slot it in to the hand which like i said i do quite dislike that it's also very tight to get it to slide into the hand i guess if you do end up chipping it you're only ever going to put it into his hand anyway so it's like not the end of the world but i still don't want it to chip and then we will Take the Mastodon head shield. And uh, there we go. That is the fully assembled, which is still like very badly out of the frame. Let's fix that. The fully assembled Zord Ascension Project Dino Megazord. So not bad, actually. Uh, you know, actually having this one in hand and having this one have a little bit better QC uh, than the black and gold one did and just also kind of getting used to this sort of combination or this particular model uh, with that version, I kind of know what to expect with this. So honestly, I'm not too disappointed in this thing. I still don't like 100% love it. I don't like the translucent yellow on the Mastodon M's there. I don't like this gradient design or this little kind of plating or whatever they have going on there with that. Um, but besides that, I think proportion wise, it's not too terrible. I always think it's difficult to get a good proportion of this Megazord to where the head, I always feel like on every version, the head always kind of looks a little too tiny uh, compared to kind of the show model and maybe sometimes the Mastodon shoulder pads are a little too big. Uh, here I don't think it's too terrible, I th even here I think the head could be a little bit bigger, but for what it is, it's not too bad, not kind of scaling wise and everything. Uh, articulation wise, which is going to be difficult to show off in its fullest, uh, but you do have a full rotation there. Uh, and you can rotate it there and make that nice click sound that makes me nervous. Uh, you do have a very nice bend there. The hands are on a kind of a ball joint. Uh, you have that up and down there. You have that waist articulation. Uh, you have that head on a ball joint. You have that bend there and back, which just kind of creates every, uh, kind of a problem. Uh, you have the whole movement there with these, uh, but you can get him into somewhat dynamic poses and everything uh, if you just kind of take the time and pose it correctly which I'm not the best at but you can you can get him into something which I don't feel like he's gonna stand on that one but there's I guess something sort of turned to the side uh, but yeah not not terrible 
Uh, I do want to show off the Rangers in the cockpit there, if that's something that I can actually show off properly, because, uh, okay, there we go. So there is the Rangers, Tampa Graft there, a little stickered in the cockpit, uh, whose mask, of course, completely fell onto the floor. But that actually was not too difficult to take off on mine. So we'll kind of fix that horn situation back up. So I'm definitely very excited to get the Dragon Zord uh, whenever Pulse ships that out uh, to actually, you know, fully show off all the combinations and everything with that because uh, I do quite like... I've never owned a Dragon Zord, even though I've owned a couple versions of Megazord over the years, I have never once owned a Dragon Zord. So in that regard, I'm pretty excited to finally get one for my collection and kind of see, you know, how that is. But overall, I would say that this is not too terrible. It's not the worst. It's not the best, but it's here. And then I do want to kind of show off the swappable hands. We'll see how difficult that is to show them off. But uh, you do have these splayed open hands that you should be able to attach. There we go. So you have an open hand for both of them, but it is a little tricky to, to swap them around. I do appreciate that regard, but I'm definitely just going to keep them in the fisted mode. Uh, because it's easier for holding well it's obviously the only one that can hold the weapons and of course it's easier and the also the only one uh, that can actually do uh, the transformations so but yeah that is the zord ascension project dino megazord but now of course before i wrap up i do want to take a very quick look at those mini little rangers that are included and uh, kind of wrap it up here And here are the tiny, tiny little ranger figures that are included, kind of the zoom, like the most zoomed in that I can get. So I do like these quite a bit, the inclusion of them just for kind of the funness of them, uh, kind of putting the Megazord in the background right below it there. Uh, you can see that's the tip of the Triceratops foot. Uh, so they are incredibly, incredibly tiny uh, and definitely something I'm a little worried about losing. Uh, but they do, you know, they are fun to have with the Megazord and kind of just zooming out there. Uh, there kind of is with them. Uh, so that's definitely very, very fun, especially if you have one 144 scaled buildings, uh, which is something uh, that they made the scaling of this try to be in scale with this kind of things. I uh, feel like model kits and everything. So I'm going to leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description below to this particular building that I got uh, that makes a cool little display for your Power Rangers, the little one 144 scaled versions that are included with here if you want something like that to kind of pose uh, with your Dino Megazord. I think that that is definitely something pretty fun that you can do. Uh, but that's pretty much going to do it for the review, kind of unboxing, finally showcasing the Zord Ascension Project Dino Megazord, the first Megazord entry in the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. So overall, I like it. I do actually like it. I Like I said earlier, I don't like some of these designs that they've taken here. It's definitely a little finicky. It's definitely, you know, for something that hyped up so much, it's not like the greatest Megazord that's ever been made, that's for sure. Uh, but I think that they're learning. I think that they're getting better. I think Dragon Sword does look pretty good. I think Astro Megazord looks absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait to see what happens uh, going forward in this line. But I get it though. For how many different versions of the Dino Megazord there is out there, and for how many different QC problems that there's been with paint and with missing pieces and with wrong pieces and all that kind of stuff and breakage on this thing, it's definitely not for everybody. I definitely highly recommend trying to get it on sale, especially with Black Friday and stuff like that around the corner at the time of this video. Uh, you might be able to get a pretty good deal for this. If you can get it for closer to 100, 110, whatever, uh, rather than 165, you're probably looking at a pretty good pickup here. Uh, and also, like I said earlier, being that this is the most sophisticated version of the Dino Megazord in this color scheme that I own, uh, for me, this is my definitive version of the Dino Megazord, at least for now until Hasbro you know, probably inevitably remakes this thing in a couple of years again or something like that. Uh, but for now, I can recommend it to a degree. I just can only recommend future Zap entries more than this. Uh, but of course, if you're going to get Dragon Zord, you're going to want this to combine it with and all that kind of stuff there. So it's definitely an interesting idea. It's definitely an interesting product. And uh, I think Hasbro did a pretty solid job. They still did a much better job with the box than the actual toy, in my opinion. But it's an interesting thing. So let me know down in the comments below. Have you picked up the Zord Ascension Project Dino Megazord from the Lightning Collection? Do you plan to? Uh, do you have the black and gold version? Are you getting the other Zords in this line? Uh, anything about it down in the comments below, I'd love to know. And be sure to stay tuned for my comparison video between this one and the NFT black and gold one coming out somewhat soon. And of course, until next time, you guys can follow me on Twitter at LiveRangerKey or at LightningFigPR, and I'll see you all later.